this computer. Got it. Uh, so today I'm going to go over a couple of uh, different types of container escapes. Uh, one of them I think we'll find pretty interesting. Uh, the first two are pretty basic, unfortunately. Uh, the first two, luckily though, will, I, I'm going to use this term loosely, never be patched because they are uh, working as intended in accordance with Docker's policies and their security structure and everything of that nature. So uh, I've created a couple of different uh, things. Uh, don't worry about bomb yet. Uh, we'll get to that later. That's the cool one that I think you guys will like. Uh, so inside this uh, directory, I've got just a couple of ways to start Docker containers. The first one we're going to start with is like the really easy to escape one. It's trivial almost. Any kind of privilege container is going to be super trivial to escape just because it's literally already running as root on the host system and it has full access to everything on the host system. So this one's going to take about 30 seconds, a minute to go through. Um, the other one will take a little bit longer because it requires some actual coding. I'm not going to go through any kind of like privilege escalation in Docker or anything of that nature. I'm just going to assume that you've already used some other method if you're not already root when you come into the container to make it up to root. So the first one is super simple just because since we're already root, we're already in a privilege container, we can already do all the fancy stuff. Um, so the first thing that we've got to do is I always just make a simple and then escape directory. And then I can just literally mount the file system. So I already know that in dev, you know, so let's just take a look at dev. We all know that the DA type file systems are, you know, where a host system like stores its information and everything of that nature. So, you know, usually it's SDA1, but since I'm in a Docker container on a AWS server, it's XVDA. So literally all we do at this point is we simply mount to mount the dev and the XVDA1 to our little temp directory, and that's it. We are literally root on the system, and that's it. Home, slash Ubuntu. Might help if I can type today. I'm still root because I'm in a privileged container. So I can do anything that I want to do. I can list off all the processes. I can do anything that's needed. So it's super simple. It's incredibly easy to escape a privileged container. So that one's not even really worth talking about in my experience. The next one is, is in my opinion, significantly more difficult. So that's the less privileged container. So this one, we're still a system administrator. Uh, we've turned off App Armor, and it's still a Ubuntu container. But it's significantly less privileged. We can't just mount containers. We can't just mount file systems and things of that nature. We just don't have the capabilities in this container to do that. So with this one, we're going to abuse uh, the release agent on uh, the host system to force it to give us root access to the host system. And how we're going to do that is pretty simple. I say that. So sys file systems, uh, C groups, and then RDMA, because that's the kind of file system that we have. So here we've got a release agent, which we're going to mess with. We've got notify on release, which is going to be useful for us. But the thing is, we have to be able to modify the inside of this. So I'm going to just try and create a temporary directory in here just to get some stuff going. I can't. It's a read-only file system. Uh, but we do have a way to get around this because we are a system administrator. So normally, you can't make any kind of like modifications to this from inside of a Docker container. But we're going to get around this by just mounting it 
to our local Docker container. So first thing I got to do is I got to make another temp directory and I'm going to name it after the best person ever. That's me. So then we're just going to mount it. We're going to mount the C group. We're going to give it the options of RDMA because that's the type of C group that we're in and then C group again. And then we're going to point it right back to that temp directory that we just named after the best person ever. And then if we look, we've got slash temp slash Todd. We've got this again, but now we can do make dir slash temp slash Todd slash test. Seems to have worked. If I could. And now we've got a test in there. Uh, let's check the other one. Yep. So now we can write to this file system. So that's pretty cool. Now we have to set it so that it does something on the release of any process that comes into this test group. And how we're going to do that is we're literally just going to set it so that it so one ah, music. Sorry, guys, I'm using a new keyboard and I'm trying to get used to it again. Uh, so we're going to echo one to slash temp slash best name ever, slash test. And we're just going to notify on release. And what this is doing is it's just telling it that when a process under this control group ends to do the notify, to do the uh, release group action. So it's gonna do the command that we're going to force release agent to do. So. The next thing that we need to know is we need to know where we're going to put our actual command that's going to be executed by the release agent. So how we do this is we look in the mtab file, so etsy mtab, and this is going to give us a table of all of the things that are mounted on this file system. And the one that you're looking for is the upper directory. This one right here, this tells us where the actual file system of the Docker container actually is. So this goes straight to the root of our Docker container that we're currently in this file system. So I just save this to a variable because it's long, it's winded. I don't feel like keeping up with it. So now we know where the file system is. Um, Let's go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and make it in the root and name it command. Um, so now we've got our little command in there, uh, just so I know where it is, echo dollar sign a slash command. And we're going to put that in slash temp slash best name ever. And we're going to put it in release agent. And what that's going to do is it's going to tell when a process ends, it's going to default to release agent and say, run this command that's in this file. So now it's going to run a command, but our command is empty. So we need to put something in the command. So I'm just going to do that real quick, slash bin, slash bash. Into slash command, echo. Uh, let's just do a simple one. Echo hello into slash home slash Ubuntu slash best name ever again, just so I know where it's coming from. And we're also going to put that in slash command. Okay. Got to make sure that it is executable. And then all we got to do is execute the attack. So we have to put something in that temporary release group or that temporary control group that we created. We're going to put it inside of there, inside the processes. And then when it ends, it'll launch the attack that we just did. And just to make sure I'm over here on this, nothing here. And then let's see. Echo. Awesome. 
slash best name ever slash test and cgroup.procs. This just tells it that we're just going to run this inst almost instantly ending command into cgroup.procs. And then it should end the command. And when it does, the release agent will activate and it will tell it to go ahead and, and run that command that's in the root of our Docker container. And suddenly there's a file here. It's got my name in it. It sounds real pretty, looks real nice. So again, we can execute any kind of commands with this because we're literally executing this root. So we can literally execute a reverse shell or any number of other commands through this. So that's this has been one of the more common ones that I've been able to use um, when I've done it. Um, but the next one I think is even cooler. So this one is an actual like proof of concept back from like 2019. And I think we might be able to use this one in the actual uh, upcoming uh, CFC as well. And I created a little Docker container for it. And I named it bomb. And real simple, I went and stole an online proof of concept for this. And I'm using an old version of Docker. So any Docker version between 18.06 dot one and 18.09.1 is exploitable through this particular proof of concept. And the basic gist of what's going to happen with this proof of concept, it's relatively simple, but uh, there's a flaw in the Docker exec command that allows people to use it to overwrite specific files. This one is destructive. Uh, so if you look here in the bomb file, I've got a backup of the run C file. This exploit literally overwrites the run C file and forces Docker to run this command that you're giving into the run C file. So let's go ahead and get started. Docker, oh, that's my brain blanking. What was the command? Control F. Uh, All right, so I've already created this Docker container. We've got the CVE in here. I did not create this proof of concept. I don't know enough Go to create this proof of concept, unfortunately, but I understand how the actual exploit itself works. And I'm gonna go through that real quick just so you guys know what's kind of going on. All right, so the first thing that we've got here is we've got this shell command. And that's what we're actually going to be executing. So for here, I'm just going to make something simple. Uh, let's do yes, aux into slash home slash Ubuntu slash Todd was here. This is the actual command we're going to be executing. And all we're basically really doing is we're overriding the run C binary. We're setting a trap for someone who comes into this Docker container. And what's going to happen is they're going to use the exec command to try and get into this Docker container. And it's literally going to trigger this trap. It's going to overwrite the run C binary. And then it's going to try and run the run C binary again, which is going to execute our command. So you'll see all this other stuff that basically is what is this is saying right here. This is where it does the actual writing of the file itself. It writes to the it writes the payload to the run C file. And that's basically it. Very simple, relatively short proof of concept. It's about 90 lines of code. So go build main.go. Real simple. And just main. Overwrites bin.sh on our local machine. So I'm going to come over here to the host machine and I'm going to do docker exec dash IT to get an interactive shell. And then I'm going, first thing I need to do is uh, Docker LS, because I need to know which one I'm messing with. So Docker exec dash IT, 
then we're just going to type in enough so that it can differentiate the Docker container so it can figure out which one we're talking about. And then we're going to do slash bin slash sh. And you'll see it said no help topic for bin slash sh. Over here, it looks like I misfired somewhere. I probably wrote something wrong when I wrote my actual command because it says it successfully got the file handle, but it didn't complete the command here. So let me check my main.go and see if I messed up again. Might help if I use the actual. Yes, Alex. And just to make sure that I'm crazy. Yep, it didn't go off like I thought. Why did you not go off? That's part of connect. Looks like it. Let's give it a shot blank and see what happens. And this is what I like to refer to as the curse of the live demo. I practiced this about 50 times. And you know, whenever it, it always tends to go wrong when other people are watching. So let's try this bad boy again. So we've overwritten bin.sh. Gonna come back over here to the host operating system. I'm gonna see if I can get this thing to work. So Docker exec, still the same one, bin.sh. So see over here, it says the command executed is, and it's successfully executed, um, but I don't have a command in there because I'm silly. But now one thing that will happen is Docker is broken now. So if I try and use Docker and I don't have a command in there, I'm sorry, I failed miserably. I must have fat fingered my command and not looked at it properly. But at this point, Docker is completely broken because the run C binary is completely different from the one that we had in there originally. So I have a backup of the run C binary, but if I try and do anything, so let's just say I just try and do Docker run uh, dash IT Ubuntu just to get a simple Ubuntu shell, it's just going to hang forever. It's not even going to let me escape or kill the process or anything like that because there's a significant difference between the one that's in uh, user sbin and the one that I have right here. And the only way that I found to actually fix the problem if you start Docker is to completely reboot the machine. So binary files, user sbin run c and run c dot back differ. They're completely different files now. The Docker will never complete properly. Um, again, I practiced this about 50 times and even wrote my commands down and everything, and uh, it still misfired on me. So uh, word to the wise going forward, record your demo so you can just show them to other people. So, all right, guys, that's about all I've got for you um, in terms of this one. So. Whoever's ready to take over after me can show me up and show me how a live demo is actually done. No, you did really good. Thanks. <laughs>